Hi, welcome back to my video blog. Today I will be discussing um, Hughes' documentary on Goya, and I will be asking and answering my own question. So um, the question I'm asking is, why did Hughes choose to use such quick, blurry motions and dramatic lighting to tell Goya's story? So kind of throughout the entire documentary, I noticed all the transitions um, and just times where Hughes was just talking were all these scenes happening. They didn't necessarily have anything to do with the painting itself um, that of Goya's painting, but it just intrigued me because I felt like this motion and blurriness kind of reflected the mood for Goya's paintings. Now, he has some very, I would say disturbing, let's be real. Some of them are a little disturbing. Some of them are even kind of just upsetting to look at, but I think he has an approach towards death and that we all die someday, as morbid as that sounds. Um, and he can reflect the gruesomeness of life that we experience on earth. Um, and I think since Hughes did mention that um, he had a near death experience and that that near ex death experience helped him to explain Goya more, he was able to understand it. Um, he also st says that Goya haunted his dreams, but he also states that Goya is a defining figure of the 19th century because he looks forward into the 20th and tells us what we have in common with our past and ancestors, which again, that answer ultimately is death. That's what we all have in common with everyone. Um, and I think because he has that dark um, background in terms of Goya, it makes sense as to why he decided to use these transitions and moments to tell the story um, and to show Goya's art. Specifically in today's video blog, I'd like to talk about the choices that Hughes makes for his documentary um, to really get across Goya's darkness, if that's the word I want to use, but um, the grotesque, you know, um, the gothic even, if we're going to go so there. So the painting of Goya's that I'd like to most focus on is the pilgrimage to San Isidro, which was painted from... 1820 to 1823 and the reason why is that this painting in particular has a lot of movement and darkness almost the entire painting is dark um there's only a little bit of white here and there but even like since you know the the whole cr contrast between light and dark and light is you know being saved and darkness is being doomed even the light doesn't even seem like it's doing anything um, and something in particular about this painting is that there is someone right at the front um, and his mouth is wide open. His eyes almost look like there's no pupils in them. They're just whites of his eyes and he's playing guitar. And it looks like, you know, this should be a moment where someone's having a fun time singing guitar and, you know, being goofy. But this looks like complete terror, complete despair, something really went wrong. Um, and... I see that with how Hughes chose to depict his film, because when he mentions his near-death experience, it was something that went wrong, but he was able to understand Goya. Um, and I think that this painting in particular really shows that. Um, and it shows how Hughes decided to have these dark transitions of movement and, you know, mystery and just like, what is going on right now? Um, in the film. And one of them in particular is right at the beginning, um, right when Hughes is kind of finished up talking, there's a moment where we're on the street and it is, there is some light. It is dark. It seems like it's nighttime, but there's light from the street, but we also see city, like the, the street lights too. So like, you know, the red and green of the traffic lights and there's people walking and it's just blurry. It's, you know, you see their faces for a moment, but then you don't. Um, and it's almost like it's, it's the fleeting moment of life that you're there and then you're not. And I know that sounds sad. A lot of this video is going to kind of include that, but, um, I really see that with, Hughes's um, depiction of his documentary on Goya. And I'm going to talk a little bit more now about um, specifically the pilgrim, the pilgrimage to San Isidro and how that movement and that darkness also relates to the documentary. So something I would like to point out is that the be at the beginning of the film, um, David Hughes is talking directly to the audience as I am talking to you now. And it's in a full lit room and, you know, there's nothing suspicious going on. 
Um, but when he describes that he had a near-death experience and that he was unconscious, um, it cues to this very scary, a lot of movement, this crazy music playing, big zoom up on the face, dark lighting, almost like dark bluish lighting on him. It feels like there's almost like lightning going on um, when describing this near-death experience. And I think it shows how this could be an inner thing that someone is facing um, that we don't really know about. And we could see that with um, the pilgrimage, and that's how I'm going to refer to the painting. Prado's website, in their discussion of the pilgrimage to San Isidro, um, they discuss that um, despite the multiple explanations, and this is a quote from their website, um, offered by art historians, these works continue to be mysterious and, and, and enigmatic, yet they present many of the aesthetic problems and moral considerations appearing in Goya's works. Um, and these, the, the mysteriousness comes from the faces, and I think that ultimately is it. To me, I, from what we've seen so far this semester, Goya's faces that he paints have so much movement. It's not just, you know, the simple Mona Lisa smile. This is faces that are like completely in terror, in despair, and we can see it happening just the way they're almost like distorted. And I think that's the point. And I think that's also the point of life can feel distorted when trouble comes about. Um, and one more thing I wanted to point out as well, um, when talking about how I mentioned how there was a moment in Hughes's film where we have that alley that's arched when it's dark, there are two figures in um, Goya's painting for the pilgrimage in which they are completely dark. They have like two um, two hats on and then their entire dress is black. And since they're standing next to each other, they just look like a two-headed person the way that it is, but they're moving. The way that one person has his head to his side and the other one looks like he's looking away. It's, it's like there's a thousand different things going on in this picture, but I think that is exactly it. That is reflective of life, that there is a thousand different things going on and there's no way we can, can control it. So from Stephen Phelan's article from 2019 in The Guardian called Goya's Black Paintings, Some People Can Hardly Even Look at Them, um, he talks with Teresa Vega, who, um, who was actually quoted in the title. She states, some people can hardly even look at them. Um, and Phelan goes on to say that an art historian, that she's an art historian who leads guided tours in the museum and leaves that room for last. Um, I've had plenty of clients, as um, Teresa states, who didn't like them at all. But when they walk in, they are always surprised. I don't think I've ever seen a visitor whose expression, expression hasn't changed. Even a yawning teenager will wake up when they see them. Um, and then Phelan um, later on goes on to say when talking with Vega, or actually Vega states, um, when talking about any of Goy's paintings that, and I quote, and still today, none of us can claim I have it, I understand them. The mystery makes them very appealing, but also very disturbing. Um, and just from this quote, I kind of recognize that with Hughes's film. Um, and Hughes's film from around 1506 to 1511, there's a moment when we are looking kind of in an archway of an alley, and we see the light of what's going on outside of the alley, but inside the alley, we don't see what's going on. Everything is blacked out. So we don't know who is coming towards us. And again, this is just a transition. This has nothing really to do with the content of what Hughes is talking about um, directly, but it has that feeling where we don't know what's coming at us. It's dark. It almost seems scary. We don't know what to expect. We don't know what's gonna happen and we don't get it. Um, and I think that is something that we can definitely also see in the pilgrimage. So according to Art Daily's article called 24 Personalities Revealed in Pilgrimage to San Isidro by Goya, um, they discuss that, um, and I quote, Goya himself said that he only saw bodies in that lines. Where does one find lines in nature? I only see luminous bodies and dark bodies, planes that advance and planes that recede, reliefs and cavities. Um, and this was from, the website took this from the report by Goya to the Academia de San Fernando. 
um, and from his conversations with Mithiron. So uh, this is just something interesting to note that this is the way he views the world. Um, and I want to compare that to how Hughes described him in the film. Um, Hughes stated that Goya wasn't afraid to look on the world as a dark place where terrible things happen. He knew it was. And in his interview with Leon um, Golub, um, who was another artist, did that. Goya was all over the place. You can't grab him. And to that, Hughes responded, no, because he bites. He's a dog. Um, and I liked that quote because I felt like Hughes really had a personal connection to Goya at that point. Um, and I know I keep referring to the traumatic experience that Hughes faced, but I think Goya helps to explain that emotion when you just when you have such a bad experience with something that's life-threatening, it makes you realize not only there's good things in the world, but there is so much bad. And that's, again, this is such a pessimistic video, but um, the way in which that Goya is stated from that Art Daily article that he saw the world only um, as bodies and not lines, I think he's emphasizing that he sees it as life um, and that in this, specifically in the pilgrimage, if we look at the people in it, um, you know, they look like the poor, they look like they need help and we need to see them as life on top of it, no matter what they face the same way that Hughes was able to see his own life after having a near death experience. And I hope that makes sense. It makes sense to me. Um, but I think Hughes chose to depict his film in using these transitions that seem so dark and mysterious and, um, not really making any sense. They just kind of were there just to kind of add to the effect, to give a little bit of mood to the, the video, um, to make sure that, you know, Goya's darkness was really pulled through. But also, I do think that Hughes chose to put in these transitions to show that something like the pilgrimage can be mirrored in real life. And that real life experience was his near death experience. And the same experience as if you walk into a dark alley and you can't see who's coming at you because it's that dark in there. And that is the scariness of life that Goya was able to depict in his paintings, but Hughes is able to depict that in real life as well. Thanks for watching.